Hey guys, it's me, Video President 101, 102, back. Okay, so, um, sorry I didn't post anything yesterday. I didn't get any good footage of the dance, and I came home a little bit too late to record anything because I didn't want to record. So let's just get right into it. Waking up that morning was a shock Roman wasn't ready for. There was no brightness to greet him when his eyes opened. Instead, his once grand room looked sad and dulled, as if overnight the glow had been stolen away. But he couldn't fix it. Zeus, he couldn't even fix himself. When he clicked his fingers, nothing happened. There was no pull on his energy, no magical transformations. When he tumbled out of his bed and felt blindly for some inspiration, he grabbed nothing but air tainted within doubt and secret tears. Internally, he was screaming about it. He was crying and begging and rasping. On the outside, he was blank, like an untouched canvas. Maybe someone would paint him one day and turn him into something beautiful. He doubted it. Slowly, painfully, he tugged on his suit, fixing his hair, slapped on a smile, round rough around the edges, he thought, staring at himself in the mirror. To bet he wasn't a diamond on the inside. It was just prints. Just Roman. Just there. No. He shook himself and tried to brighten his face. Just a little. He didn't think it worked. But at least he could claim he tried. Trying and failing was worth more than just failing. There was what he'd been told. It wasn't necessarily what he believed. When he made it to the kitchen, the others were already there. Roman... Ridge looked at Coley, focusing more on the pancakes pan and had placed in front of him than the royal. Decided to quit your moping. Princey didn't bother to answer, just pulled open the fridge and grabbed a water bottle. He wasn't thirsty, but he'd been pretty conspicuous if he collapsed. He glanced at the pancakes, but he could just envision the ashy taste on his tongue and the stomach roiled. Maybe later. Roman? Pan said hesitantly. You want something to eat? He wanted to say no. It was sitting on his tongue, but Patton looked so hopeful and scared that he just couldn't refuse. Yeah, he relents tiredly. Sure, Patton. The discomfort was worth it, just to see Patton smile brightly and bustle off, dishing up something, some of the flat food. Roman ignored the small huff from Virgil and sat, shoulders hunched. Roman? Logan started. I do believe we all owe each other some apologies after the, um, incident from earlier. The three of us have already talked to each other about it, and we've- That's nice, Roman said absently, picking at the table. Well, yes, but here you go, Patton announced cheerfully, sliding the plate in front of him. Roman looked down at the disdainfully. He he If he- Concentrated just enough, he could almost see the black sludge hitting, hiding from him, sludge that made from ash and dust and broken dreams. Regardless, he forced down two pancakes and managed a watery grin as Patton whisked the plate away. Thomas is planning a video, he told the others. Be prepared for summons. Oh, I love our videos, Patton guessed. We always end up closer as a family. Patton. Logan said, straining his glasses. It really isn't that exciting. Patton glared at his fellow side. I'm appreciating life, he said defensively. Try it sometime. <laughs> it wasn't mean, and Logan had a small smile on his face as he sipped at his tea. Roman nodded to himself and faced Virgil. You were wrong, he said. I am not left brain, right brain. Those two are. Then, he got up and walked away. He wandered down to his room and stood outside the door. It used to open automatically for him. It rem reminded him how little he... It rem reminded him how very little he had left. He walked away from his room and made him his way to the studio to check in on Thomas. His host was currently engaged in conversation with Joan, which wasn't a problem. Roman was ignoring the talking until... That was an 
unimaginative joke, Sanders, Joan said. Roman froze. Unimaginative? But, but, but imagination was Roman's job. He'd done it. He'd fed Thomas ideas and materials, and yet unimaginative? He left, stumbling back towards the room, but expend, expended up in the kitchen. Roman, Penn said cautiously, you okay, buddy? Roman didn't answer, just stared and stared and stared until... Yo, singing beauty, come back to Earth. Virgil was watching him carefully when Roman blinked himself back into the present. Unimagined unimaginative you good i but he couldn't say couldn't tell them how he failed he couldn't do it roman please pan said do we need to talk about this i don't want another virgil virgil flinched something left inside the royal a flare of anger and bitterness another virgil he spat No, I'm not another Virgil. Virgil's the only Virgil. God, it always has to be with him, isn't it? Oh, no. Virgil's upset. That's okay. We'll fix him. That's fine, guys. But you need to stop comparing everything else to Virgil, because I am not him. There was silence. Then there was a shuddering sob. Roman turned and fled. I have stuffy nose, doodle doodle doo Okay, chapter 10. There was something in the corner of his room. It was small, slender. Roman stared through the darkness and ignored the sighing panic, the sighing static in the air around his room. The figure was familiar in a way that family members are familiar. He knew the shape, remember the niggling feeling that was eating at his heart. Hello, Dallin, he said quietly. The figure moved, steps unsteady and jolting. Hello, Roman. The voice was raspy and weak, bloodshot eyes gleaming in the dull air. Roman looked away. You summoned me again. Roman wanted to deny it. He didn't. How long are you staying this time? I'm here for as long as you want me here. But I don't want you here. Are you sure? And no, he really wasn't. It was the downfall every time. He was never really sure, never confident enough to dispel his own demons, even though he fought everyone else's. He slipped out of bed and stood on shaky legs. Go easy, he pleaded. I don't think I am as strong as... I was last time. How strong were you last time, Roman? The royal's eyes closed. I don't know. His voice was strained, and the darkness at his world's words up. Sometimes he felt like nothing ever got past the darkness around him. He did the best to ignore his old friend, his oldest enemy. What do you call... One who has both the reason you needed to fight and the one you were fighting. Do you call them family? Or the true person tucked behind the walls of insecurity? Slowly, he changed into a simple pair of jeans and a white top turned gray by time. It wasn't willing to suit on his suit. Not today. Maybe not ever. That would be ironic. He hesitated. He hesitated when he opened the door, finding the urge to look over his shoulder. They can't see you, can they? I don't know, Roman. Can they? He sighed and walked out the door. The constant buzz of static went quiet in his ear as he approached the kitchen. He had to apologize for before. He had to apologize for a lot of things. He had to explain. There's a tug on his shoulder that reminded him of what exactly he was carrying with him. There was no way for him to enter Thomas's imagination now. It would destroy everything. When he walked in, only Roman was sitting at the table reading a book. Good morning, Roman. 
The tray greeted without looking up. Have you recovered after yesterday? I'm fine, Roman said. Where are the others? Logan adjusted his glasses and turned the page. Thomas is making a video with them, some kind of emotional overload. I deducted that I would not be needed. Roman wanted to say something about it. Instead, he grabbed an apple and bit into it. I want to apologize about before. He mumbled around the junk. It was quite unfair of me. I'm not used to mm, losing my composure like that. Logan turned another page. I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. Pennant was quite distressed by your unusual outburst of emotion and anger. And I tried to explain that you were stressed and tired. But Virgil insisted that he better take care of it. There was a tired chuckle from behind Roman, and he winced. Logan turned another page. For a little while, it was quiet. Only the sound of breathing and turning pages, and the overwhelming sound of white noise. Logan never gave any sign of noticing anything amiss. But as Logan turned to walk out, the logical trait cleared his throat. If anything were to be bothering you, he said hesitantly, Penn is quite insistent that you talk to someone about it. Logic might help you. Logic can explain away a lot of things, Logan agreed heavily, hearing a rattling inhale from beside him. But not everything. It wasn't a rejection, and it wasn't quite acceptance. It'd be ensure the offer remained. Roman could use an escape from the hell in his head. He fought with himself for a moment, debating whether to work with Thomas's imaginations and dreams or enter the current video. Another slightly louder part of him shouted that he returned to his room and stared down until he was conquered again. He found himself sitting on his bed, lights on, staring at the familiar face. Oh my god. This is supposed to be funny, but I find that funny. It's like... <laughs> It's either go do the video or work on his job. And the voice is like, go stare at him. And then he goes stare at him. It's like something you would see in a cartoon, you know? <laughs> the royal stout was a mess. Black hair with thin, stringy, and greasy. A messy nest of stress on his head of terrible thoughts. Lines of merit of once attractive face and highlighted cheekbones with sharp with malnutrition. Black eyes were blink with emptiness. Prince he found way too familiar. It was scary how much of himself he could see in the ghost in front of him. There was bags under desponent eyes. There was, I'm sorry, there he was in the slumped shoulder and raw lips, trembling with the stress holding back critical words. What if you don't go away this time? Roman whispered. It's probably his biggest fear. What if I can't beat you again? Dallin stared right back at him sorrowfully. That's not up to me. Why did I say that so cheerfully? Oh my god. Um, How do I voice this character? <clears throat> That's not up to me. He told the ragged trait. I'm sorry, Roman, but this is something you have to do yourself. I can't. The royal felt tears bubble to life. Dallin, I can't do it again. Not now. You have to. I can't. Dallin didn't say anything to that, and both creativity and doubt existed in perfect harmony for just a moment. Chapter 11 Roman felt the tug in his stomach moments before he appeared in the real world. He barely had enough time to compose himself before he was rising up. Thomas! He greeted loudly. He didn't dare glance at his other counterparts. What can I do for you? We could handle this, kiddo. Princey refused to acknowledge that the frostiness in Patton's voice. Thomas, maybe we should call on Logan. He'll have something to say that's actually helpful. Oh, that's that's Virgil saying that. I should not use Patton's voice. 
Thomas, maybe we should call on Logan. He'll have something to say that's actually helpful. Thomas frowned. Wait, that was Patton. Holy crap. Let's keep reading. Thomas frowned. Pat, you good? That was kind of harsh. It's fine, Roman said loudly. It was anything he didn't deserve. Thomas, Riddle interrupted. Emotional overloads are a natural part of life. You've lived through enough of them. But it's still hard to deal with if you don't know the right strategies, Roman declared. Thomas, can you identify the starting point of this overload? His host pierced his lips thoughtfully as the suspenseful silence thickened. I think I think it was when I got hit with all of your ideas, Roman. I didn't have anything to do with them. The royal faltered. So, this was because of me? Hang on, Virgil said. Haven't we dealt with this problem before in the in my original video? Are we talking about this again? Because let me know so I can leave. This is different, Thomas said slowly. Before I didn't have any original ideas. Now, I have too many and I can't cope. Then just tell Princey to stop overloading you and we'll be fine. Patton snapped and Roman couldn't help the static that it introduced on his thoughts and blocked out his words. He thought he could hear Thomas scolding Patton. Sorry. And he thought he could hear Virgil asking something about he needed to leave now, needed to crawl back in bed and pretend he didn't exist, but he couldn't stop smiling or they'd know something was wrong. And he can't have that because... He couldn't be Virgil. Roman, Riddle shouted. His head, he shook his head, mustered a bright smile, and nodded. Pedin is right. I simply must store my ideas for another day. Of course, instead of ideas, I simply must flood you with Broadway songs. Thomas, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> that's so, that's such a mood. <laughs> Princey, please don't do that. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm dead. <laughs> to what? Pretend you're not hurting. Oh, dang it! I think you're saying don't fuddle with Broadway songs. <laughs> but nope, it's just gonna switch the subject. You know, like Thomas does all the time. Pretend you're not hurting. I know something is wrong with you. You're part of me. You all are. You think I can't feel it? Patton is never harsh to you like this, and Virgil is is concerned about what you about you and you keep insisting you're okay. Roman, you need to stop lying to yourself. He stared at his host for moments and stretched in the ears. I appreciate this sentiment, he murdered. But Thomas, I'm not lying to myself. I know exactly what's wrong. I'm choosing just not to fix it. And then he sank out. He disappointed them all. He'd ruined everything. He tried so hard, and yet everything still fell apart. And now Dallin was back, and Rowan really didn't know what to do anymore. Nobody understood. Nobody knew what it was like to have every move questioned, to be so unsure of themselves that they couldn't even breathe properly. Roman felt like he was turning into Virgil. But he couldn't do that because Virgil was the only Virgil and Roman had his own problems. But Patton had really been treating him like his anxious counterpart and Logan wasn't interfering with and Princey really needed to stop thinking before his overthought himself into a breakdown. His head was white static when he stumbled into his room and when he tried to calm himself he screamed loud enough to make the mirror shake. Thank Zeus I soundproofed your room, Dallin said from his bed. No. No, 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 no. Don't soundproof the room. The others can't hear the scream. They hear the scream, the others will know that something's wrong. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Roman wiped out his eyes, cursing his tears before they fell. 
What am I doing wrong? He breathed. Why can't I do it for Thomas? Why am I failing at this? I don't know, Roman. Dallin said, and his eyes were piercing as they met Roman's. Why? That, Roman thought, was a very good question. Logan forced Patton and Virgil into the kitchen immediately after the video. What? Who? Oh yeah, Logan. We need to talk about Roman, he told them, n noting the way Virgil stiffened in Pagleton's ashen face. I was too harsh on him before, Mortality sighed. He looks so upset. I had no right to be so mad with him. He was only telling the truth. Virgil shook his head. He's too distracted by something. He's jumpy and emotional and all over the place. Logan cleared his throat and adjusted his glasses. He wasn't one for feelings. Logic had never failed him before, but it was but it was as the royal had said. Logic could explain away many things, but some things it could not. Patton? I believe his doubt has come back. Patton gasped. Brutal's eyes widened. He defeated that, though, didn't he? Logan raised an eyebrow. You n know? he asked. Roman told me once, after I confronted him. You don't know the whole story, Patton said sadly. Logan looked down at his hands. Roman was the first of us to exist. He has full control over Thomas until Patton was created, but two of them weren't really at odds, so they coexisted quite nicely. When I was introduced, things got a little complicated. Restrictions were put in place. Patton melded with my ideas nicely. Roman did not. It created a crack in his armor, so to speak. We were all young, Virgil. Patton was, Patton was still young. Thomas was still young. We all made some mistakes. When... You were created. It hit Roman the hardest. Pet and I, we could adapt to your aura, and you were fixed in Thomas, but Roman could not. For every long time, for a very long time, Thomas could not perform. He could never raise his hand in class. He didn't do well in assignments and creative tasks because if you mess something up, Roman would take a hard hit and retreat into himself. His death was created shortly after you. We didn't know about it until it was too late to help. He befriended it, much like you do with depression. It was unhealthy. Both Roman came up, came to depend upon his doubt. Dallin, he had named it. When Thomas first fell in love, Roman fought against Dallin for the first time. It was long and tiring, and it was a hard battle, but he fought back. He stamped, and he stared, contributing once more. I guess you decided to tone it down. After that, Roman fought smaller balances with Dallin until he defeated Doubt Fight totally. It's why he's so loud and extravagant now. I comment on it how he is extra, but now Dallin is back and I fear he cannot defeat it again. Thomas will not cope with another round of this. It was quiet after Logan's story. Patton was crying silently. Virgil was silent. He knew what it was like to give up. He just never thought he'd ever be the cause of some th someone else's defeat. I'm sorry, I'm bad at English. <laughs> this is not working out, is it? Never a bad chapter in the series. Never doubt yourself. No, that was, <laughs> oh my god, yes, last chapter, yay, well, not last chapter of the book, I mean, like, last chapter that I'm going to read today. After this, I'm going to get some lunch, hopefully, if I could get lunch. The knock at the door nearly moved him to tears. He'd been staring at Dallin, staring through Dallin for a long time. Long enough to block out his life, long enough to question everything he's ever thought, created, said. 
He was a mess of thinking strings, and the more he tore himself apart, the thinner the strings got. How much more could he take, he wondered, before he snapped completely. There was another knock. Right, there was someone at the door. When he cracked it open and peered out, a despondent Virgil was not what he expected to see. Roman, the anxious trait said lamely, can we, can we talk? I guess. Roman's voice was hollow, tired, doubtful. Virgil walked into his room, slowly, blind of the shadowy figure in the corner. Roman was conscious of his presence, though. I know Dallin is in here somewhere, he said, and his voice was surprisingly strong and even. Roman wondered how he did that. But I need Roman. Let me talk to him. I'm here, Roman rasped. Virgil didn't look convinced. Sit. No, no, that's, that's Virgil saying it. Sit. Roman did. Virgil sat as well. And they both played with their book on the bed for a while. Roman thought he was drowning in the silence. Logan told me about it. The beginning. He told me what happened. Roman didn't look up. He probably exaggerated some things. Virgil snorted softly. Going on this? I think not. Roman didn't even blink. Dude, come on. Thomas can't deal with this. Not so soon after my whole episode. There's only one Virgil, Roman muttered. I said that to Patton, didn't I? Virgil frowned. Well, yeah. I meant it, Roman said. And he said with such startling cl clarity. This, this isn't you, okay? This isn't me being you. I can't be this the way you did. I can't be treated the way you were. This can't happen the way it did with you. You were not the generic first test. You know that, right? Roman, I'm here to talk about you. No. Thoreau shook his head. A agitation staring in his stomach. He was getting warm. He couldn't summon any energy to change the temperature. No. You need to know. I don't think you know. Roman, Virgil said. Please. He stopped, and there was such a hollow ringing in his ear that he winced. I'm sorry, he fumbled. I don't know what's wrong with me. How did we notice until now? Virgil asked quietly. Roman laughed bitterly. You never notice glass unless it's broken, Virg. You're not broken. You're just... You've just been painted over, Roman. Someone has covered you with white, and now you have to color yourself in again, yeah? Roman blinked, smiled. When did you get so sentimental, Wednesday Adams? Virgil flushed. Shut up. Is he really here to make you better? Dallin quoted softly. Roman closed his eyes tightly. When I first came into being, you scared me, Roman admitted. And Roman was so, so relieved to know that his counterpart's voice blocked out the static coming from his oldest enemy. You were so strong, you know? I had a... It was intimidated by your constant ideas, your ability to dream and control. You never were scared, and you always had so much responsibility. I never knew how much you could keep up with all of that. Practice, I heard myself. I heard himself say. Virgil huffed. Yeah, well, I never noticed you go off the grid. Logan tells me... It was my rival that sent you spiraling. It wasn't you. Shut up, Virgil said fondly. I'm telling the story. I understand, Princey. I do. 
I just never realized how much of an effect it really had on you guys, on Thomas. Sure, but I never thought about how it affected affect his traits to be so nervous. Logan had told me that this word Dallin came from, yeah? Yeah, everyone admitted very quietly. Yeah, well, your smothering creativity is where Derek came from. We create each other's shadows, Princey. My darkness can't exist without your light. And you can't see you can't be seen without me. I hate how profound you're sounding, Roman managed. Virgil chuckled. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. I have a reputation to uphold. What a dream of it. Was it him, or is he getting a little cooler now? He wasn't feeling as tired. Some of the dark smudges on the wall faded a little. Maybe he could do this. He could get better. Get his life back on track. Dallin saw a pulse crippling self-doubt, and those dark smudges spread a little more. Roman thought they looked like spiderwebs etched into his wall. Shimmery cracks in their crumpled ba barrier. You may have been the bad guy, Roman told Virgil, still staring at those black marks. But I'm lost in La La Land. Virgil stood up. At least you'll have Ryan Gosling. That was funny. Roman thinks as Virgil walks out. He didn't laugh. Dallin did. Okay, guys, that was chapter 12. And, like, we just read four chapters. It's always fun reading to you guys. I love reading to you guys. So, um, yeah. Hope you guys had all of the funs. Homecoming is coming up. So is Halloween. You guys could talk about that. We could talk about it here on the channel. Um. And, um. Subscribe. Um, do your best. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Did, uh, just do your best.